Welcome to part two of Hacking a Computer Fan. Today we're going to look at speed control and we're going to build a little controller that can do this. All of the parts you need are super cheap or free if you get them out of other electronic items. So first let's remind ourselves of some of the basics to understand what we're doing. I'm using a bench power supply and a breadboard here to demonstrate. As we raise the voltage to 12 volts, the fan speeds up. You can also see that as the voltage goes up, the current, measured in amps, also goes up, and the overall power, measured in watts, also goes up. At 12 volts, the fan is at full speed. There's about 300 milliamps running through the circuit, and the overall power of the fan is about 3.8 watts. To control the speed of the fan, we have two options. We can limit the voltage, or we can limit the current. Today we're going to limit the current, and we're going to do it with one of these. This is a BD139 transistor. The electrical symbol for a transistor looks like this. You can think of a transistor as being like a tap in an electrical circuit. No current can flow through the transistor, but if we apply a voltage at the base, then current will start to flow. So let's look at how we can use a transistor to control the fan speed. This circuit is showing a fan being powered by a 12 volt power supply running at full speed. We're going to add the transistor after the fan in the circuit. No current can flow through the transistor, it's like a closed tap, until we apply a voltage to the base. So to do that, we're going to put a potentiometer in the circuit like this. The middle pin of the potentiometer is called the wiper. As we turn the potentiometer, the voltage of the wiper pin will change. We connect the wiper pin to the base of the transistor with a 1K resistor. Now, when we turn the potentiometer, the transistor lets more or less current through and the fan speed changes. So that's the theory. Now let's build it on a breadboard to see if it works. So just like on the circuit JS diagram, I've got the power supply here with the positive on the top rail and the negative on the bottom rail. And here I'm connecting the fan to the top rail and to one pin of the transistor. Then the other pin of the transistor connects to ground. Here I'm setting up the potentiometer, connecting the two outer pins to the positive rail and the ground rail. And now I'm going to connect the middle pin of the potentiometer via the 1K resistor to the base of the transistor. trying it out, it works perfectly. So now we've seen it works in practice, let's transfer it to a little project board and have something a little bit more permanent. So I'm using this Vero board stuff, I quite like this for projects. It's got copper strips that run along it. So you don't have to connect everything with wires, you can just plan out what components are connected to each other via the copper strips that run along it. I've cut a piece to fit along the side of the fan. I found one of these things, this is like a female DC power socket, so I thought I might as well use that to plug the power supply straight in. Connect some little legs to go through the board. So 
click them through. Add a bit of tape so it stays in place and just solder them on. Okay, that's the power supply. Now the potentiometer. Again, I'm having to solder some little feet onto this because the pins aren't long enough to go through the holes otherwise. So just soldering some little wires on. Poke them through and solder them. This is where the Vero board is nice because I've just made sure that the, the outer two pins of the potentiometer are along the same copper strips as the power supply rails. So I don't have to add any wires connecting them. They're just connected as soon as you solder them in. Now the resistor connected to the wiper pin. And now the transistor. Bear in mind that the transistor's pins are not what they look like in a circuit diagram. It's usually one of the side pins that's the base. So you've always got to look up the data sheet for a transistor to know which pin's what. From the circuit diagram, it looks like it's the middle pin, but it's actually usually one of the side pins. I'm just connecting some pins on here so I can plug the fan straight onto these pins without having to cut the, cut the connection off the end of the fan. Finally, we just need a little wire going from the positive rail to the positive pin of the fan. A diagram of what I've done looks like this. I'm just inspecting the solder joints. They're not particularly pretty, but they look like they'll work. Just have to be careful that you haven't bridged any two strips of copper. Now there's a couple of places where I've got to make holes in the copper strip. And to do that, you use a drill bit. You can just do it by hand like this, you can just twist it, give it a good little twist and that wears away at the copper and you can make little breaks in the copper. So for example the one I'm doing here is to make a gap where, the, where I've put the resistor in And finally, let's just glue down these bits so they're nice and secure. 
bit of hot glue. No YouTube Maker tutorials complete without a bit of hot glue. Right, that's the completed design. So let's try it out. I right, hope some of you found this interesting. I tried to make it as simple as possible. Please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of this type of video. Take it easy. Peace out.